Goldie Horn is a bit of a Hollywood rarity. For a start, her name really is Goldie Horn. And the image you have of her on screen is the image you walk away with after meeting her. Behind the zany eccentric film character is a zany eccentric character in real life. Name a cause, she's on board. Fads, whatever's going, she's into. As for spiritual beliefs, let's not even start. But let's not be deceived into thinking Goldie Hawn is just some dumb blonde. She is anything but. You don't own me. Don't try to change me in any way. You know you're getting older when you discover that Goldie Hawn has turned 50. And worse than that, she doesn't look a day over 35. I work out every day. I watch my diet. I have not had plastic surgery. Well, good for you. You look terrific. Oh, come on. At least in her latest movie, The First Wives Club, Goldie is playing her age and playing with her Hollywood image. Only a confident actress would take the role of an over-the-hill movie star who's had just a little too much plastic surgery. What's it like turning 50? It wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. I mean, considering I looked up back on my life and I thought, oh, that, you did pretty good. I mean, I'm, I'm proud of what I've accomplished and what I've done and what I have yet to do. I feel that I'm completely turning a page in my life and that I'm free to do and be whoever I want. Perhaps the secret of this timeless blonde can be found in that mysterious looking juice that she keeps drinking. What it is, it's carrot, celery, cucumber, zucchini, um, spinach, parsley, mint, anything you want, ginger if you want, um, a little apple for sweetener. Now what it needs, it needs a shot of vodka. Oh, stop it. Oh, really? No, we don't put vodka in this. Oh, that's so sacrilege. After trying Goldie's green juice, I knew there had to be another answer. You don't look to me, to my short-sighted vision, too much different from you were when you were Private Benjamin. <laughs> do you look different to yourself? Yes, of course I do. Absolutely. But, I mean, some people really change over the passage of a few decades. Yes, they do. You, you haven't. Well, I'll tell you something. My father was one of those people who looked so young all his life. And my mother also was really young looking. I think it's genetic. Yeah, so despite this... I really do, despite, despite this all... this lecture you've given me on... on, on no, no, that... Stretching and... And uh, by the way, that's not for your physical appearance. See, okay, that's, the, okay. that's the key. Okay. The key is, is how you feel. And people say, well, you work out because you want, you know, a nice hard ass. No. I work out because when I'm finished, I feel so happy inside. Way back in 1968, Goldie didn't look much different from now. Gee, New Year's Eve is fun! We ought to make it an annual event! By the standards of the time, Rowan and Martin's laugh-in was from another planet. Yes, I know a lot of things. Yes, I, I know. And I appreciate your telling me about them. You, but yes. what do you think about this? A lot of people think that the country is becoming polarized. That now, Dan, no, it, that is ridiculous, is, because the world, how can they make us, going to make us Polish? I, <laughs> the Americans came to love it, and love Goldie. She became a star, and of course success went straight to her head. So what were you doing in therapy at that time? I mean, why? I Suddenly had, you're a star and you go into therapy. Well, there you go. I mean, I really was a very young girl. And I made it very quickly. And suddenly, I was taken from one job into another. And people were showing all this adulation. And, and it was confusing to me. I mean, I never wanted to be a star. People would say to me when I was a little girl, what do you want to be? And my answer always was to be happy. That's all I wanted to be. That's a very sensible ambition. It, it really is. And I think that, oddly enough, it is how I've lived my life. So <clears throat> I've never been driven in terms of me, my career. That looks like fun. Let us try it. For a girl not driven by her career, it must have seemed as if the career was driving her. Her first major part in the movie Cactus Flower with Ingrid Bergman and Walter Matthau won Goldie Horn an Academy Award the best supporting actress. Hi, Sergeant. Hi, Harvey. 
working with Ingrid Bergman, my first picture was great. Walter Matthau, these were old pros. It must be incredible working with Matthau when you were so young. You know, it was. Big star like but I'll tell you something. I'm not starstruck. I never was. Mm. And I, I didn't feel intimidated by either one of them. And I remember Ingrid said to me, Goldie, you were incredible, she said. It was as if you'd been doing this all your life. And I felt like I'd been doing it all my life. I didn't feel nervous, uh, out of place, intimidated, afraid. Then came the first of a series of characters in the famous zany bubblehead mode she has made her own. C'est un vin plus léger. Non, non, non. non, non. Excusez-moi, but uh, you must, uh, how you say, uh, sip it gently. No. You do it your way. And I'll do it mine. She was a girl in There's a Girl in My Suit. Hey, baby. And again, typecast in shampoo with another bubblehead character played by Warren Beatty. Hello. If you think all this typecasting is a little tedious, so did the film critics. And Arthur Knight said, Goldie's performance was as flat as her chest. Oh, definitely right that. It's awful. It was so mean that he obviously couldn't stand me. Whatever I made him feel threatened him in such a way that he went for a personal item. I like my breasts, but he didn't. Benjamin. But all the parts finally came together for Goldie Horn in the 1980 oh, film the Private yes. Benjamin, where she played a role now. not unlike her own life. Get your ass up and out on the company street! Ah! The somewhat shy girl who somehow no. makes it despite the pratfalls. Give me ten push-ups. Start knocking them out. Do you mind if I check into my room first? Assume the position and hit it. Ah! Up, down, up, down, up, down, ah! up. Ah! What is this, Hell Week? No, Benjamin. This is the army. Private Benjamin was a huge hit. Goldie wasn't just oh the star, God. she I was the producer as well. I'm quitting. Girl, you can't quit this army. I can. The recruiter told me quit any time I want. Oh, it was time Benjamin, for me to produce, and time for me to present things it's to the world. And that was one of them. Uh, Fortunately, it got so overblown. I mean, what is it to produce a movie? It was idiots producing movie in Hollywood. I mean, come on. <laughs> I mean, it's like, what, a great feat to produce a movie? It isn't. All you need is the product, and the product often sells itself. And then when it becomes a success, then you become something bigger than you are. And then when a woman becomes, becomes something bigger than she is, then it becomes more difficult, because then she becomes a force to be reckoned with. And women's power, for some reason, is very scary. Aren't we getting better, though, as men, about women with authority and power? Don't you, think, don't you think blokes are improving a bit? I do, really. I honestly do. Goldie's next time out as a producer in the movie Swing Shift wasn't a great box office success, but it did produce the great love of her life. Screen idol Kurt Russell, for whom Goldie went overboard. In fact, she produced and co-starred with Kurt in the movie of that name. I love you! I never leave you again! I'll never let you go. You're my Annie and you always will. And you two get on famously. It's the great relationship and mm -hmm. you've decided not to spoil it by getting married. No, we're not getting married. No. And I don't think the children want us to get married either. So the estate of uh, matrimony is not all it is cracked up to be, you think? Well, he was married once, and I was married twice. So what does that tell you? So marriage is one of those things that works for some. And for others, it's like closing that door and turning the key. And then suddenly, people change. And they become different people. And suddenly, the chase is over. The sex drive changes. They start looking outside the marriage for stimulation because they feel trapped. And that's an emotional, that's not real. And oftentimes, when you have a girlfriend, 
Like, I consider myself Kurt's girlfriend. And he considers me his boyfriend. Did I say that right? Mm. And um, that's the way it is. And it's, it's, it's kind of exciting. We're has-beens. We're hanging on by a thread. We're just discards. We're not hanging on by a thread and we're discards. Look at us by being together. Oh. Us. Unity. I mean, if all the first wives of the world got together, yeah. what else do we need? Just one amazing attorney. No, no. The First Wives Club is a darkly comic tale of three middle-aged women's revenge on their wayward husbands. It has already hit a nerve in America where defying the ageing process is a national obsession. Indeed, eternal youth and immortality have always been subjects dear to Goldie's reincarnated heart. Do you really think that we might have, or you might have lived before? Yeah, I do. So my final question is, if you are going to come back, what might you expect? Of me mm. or of the world? To come back as? Me, I would like to come back as me. I mean, I really would. I, I can't think of anybody else I'd like to come back. Do the whole thing all over again. Yeah. I love my life. Hello, I'm Charles Woolley. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.